Said when I was in Pajam for like literally the first five and a half months of the year, every Tuesday, I used to invite one of my legendary artist friends into the building so we can have a bit of a chinwag. And tonight, even though we've got less time to do it, I thought, why not? Why don't we just get like I still call her like the queen of UK voices <laughs> because that's what she is. That's what she's always been. That's cute. Shola Amma, how you doing? Hi, baby. You how right? are you? I'm good. I can't believe that like we're, we're ha- we've had so many chats off air. Yes, and we're I don't like think fam. We've, we're I don't, like yeah, family. literally. And I don't yeah. think we've ever had like a proper yeah, chat yeah, yeah, on air yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little business. Like so we're gonna have to moment. we're gonna have to remember that we're on the radio. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I'm re- listen, I'm remembering. You need to remember. Exactly. I, I haven't forgotten. So first of all, how, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. You're still very, very busy, still at it, yes. more than ever. Yes. We've been rinsing the FTSE record yes. with you and Danaya, which we'll get to yes. a little bit later on. But mm-hmm. like I said, we, we like to kind of go back in time when we Let's do these do little sit down chats. And you have to with me because it's like 20 years. So. You've got like you've got the substance. You've got the, the history as well, man. So the, the dinosaur. Ex- no, listen, it, you started very young. Yes, I did. And you still are young. Oh, I that's like what that. we're running with. I like this. I'm running with that too. Because that's what I'm saying about yeah. myself. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. We're in the same bracket. We're young. So, uh, yeah, we're for, young. Pe- for people listening who who yeah. have, you know grown up listening to you, or mm-hmm. like I've, I've been out and about with you before, and mm-hmm. like we bump into people in the streets, and they're like, "Oh my god, had you actually shown the Amma?" They say like, the yeah the, the show the Amma. Like there's another fake one <laughs> yeah. somewhere. But like yeah. what you've managed to do over the course of like what is coming up to like 20 years now, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's not all me though. That's 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 me that's the the rest of the people that I've collaborated with like yeah, helping me along like but, that's that's it's not I can't take credit for no it, no of course there's always there's always a team yeah. there's always people involved you've always yeah. kind of it's other artists as well you know because people say the queen thing a lot but I feel like I love that it's a nice title but there's yeah. so many unsung queens in the industry like yeah. there's a whole bag of them there no is. one talks about Rose there is. Gabor Kelly LaRock Terry Walker like this, do you get what I'm saying they're no, the all li- listen, queens so the list is strong I love it but, but there's a bunch of like we're there's a I'm one of many. You are one of many, but so. I'm still not letting you get away with it. You're still okay. like you're still the queen. Like right, cool. I'm not having it. And I'm, it, sh- I'm it. sure that the rest of those artists as well, like the likes of the Roses and the Kellys and and My all girls. of those artists who are all your girls who are all sick who are all amazing mm-hmm. as well. Don't want anyone texting me say time what with no <laughs> ratings. Um, I'm sure they'd all agree, man, because That's you kind of burst open the door for for this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird because I was so young, so I didn't really know what was happening at yeah. the time. I just knew that I, I I was passionate about it. Yeah. And now I look back on the scene, and I'm like, wow, like we there's this so how, much happening here. Look how far we've different. come. Exactly, but I can't, you know. Pe- there was people before me that did that yeah. helped me on my journey. You know, Misha Paris, Omar, yeah, Donny, like so. It's we all kind of have a part to play in the bigger Indeed. picture. Exactly. Now so. like, let's talk about growing up because you, you was yeah. West London, yeah, born and raised. Mm-hmm. Carnival on your doorstep. Absolutely. Like West London's always had a particular vibe as well. Definitely. It's always felt vibey. Like I'm Definitely. from East, which had a, its own vibe. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but West. Yeah. What was West doing for you back in the day? Well, we, my, I had a sense of community growing up. Growing up, my mum worked in a community centre with yeah. like like kids and in the summer, and we used to have festivals and I used to go to carnival and sell like. Sugar cane. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> with my granny. And so it was very much, I grew up with a big, large sense of community, like all of us on the streets and yeah. Kensal Green Festival and all of that stuff. So, yeah, I had a very social childhood from young. And, and as far as, as music goes, was it was it music in your Always. household? Always. My mum my mom was in a jazz band, so... It was like the the weirdest like <laughs> jazz ever. It so was like, so left. You'd, you'd wake up on like a Sunday morning. And she'd be mom's like, cleaning. What, what's she playing? What's she singing? What's she doing? Like the Edwin Hawkins wow. Pointer Sisters and all these. Woogie woogie woogie. Wow. Like, yeah, it was a, like little like. And little did and you know. And then my granny would play soca and be drinking with her friends. And then my cousin <laughs> in the house would be playing rare groove. So I had like a, real a mix. lot of yeah. There's a little. And you didn't even realize, but that was really prepping yeah, that was you the blueprint. for for what's about to go down Absolutely. in your own career and life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, singing has been instilled in you. It's in your genes, to mm, be fair. But I when agree. did you actually decide, right, Granny's music, I like that, Mum's thing, I'm getting <laughs> I wanted like... to act. My granddad's oh, an wow. actor. My granddad was in Family at War. He's done, like, a bunch of films here. Lever Boys, Nuns on the Run. He was, like, quite big in his time. And I wanted to act, and I put everything to drama. And then that just kind of didn't really happen. So yeah. the music was something that was natural, but it wasn't my focus at the time. Yeah. But then when the drama thing didn't work out, I just threw everything into my music. And that was... When I was young, there was so much happening. Like I fell in love with R&B at like every 14-year-old girl in 1990. 
three yeah. or whatever like, it was. To be fair, like yeah. living through the 90s. And, yeah, and that, you couldn't that, not. I say it to people and then people just like, yeah, yeah. Bro, but you're just like, you just not being you a bit old not. now. Like, it's just like everything was happening. It was the, It was a massive movement and it was like... You know how it was. Yeah, it's like it was, H-Town it was crazy. And like and New Jack Swing. Exactly. And then you had obviously you had That's the hip hop artists like the two packs. Exactly. And, the and then there and was these young girls that were my age that were releasing music like Brandy and Aaliyah and Monica and I was like, they can do it, like I can do it as well. Wow. So that was yeah, the catalyst. That was it. That was it. Now I've always heard this story and I've never actually asked you the about it. The train station. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. One hundred percent true. So, so for people who don't know, because this is like one of those fairy tale <laughs> ones, like a young singer who can just sing yeah. and Tell us the story. It's the truth. I bunked off school. I wasn't meant to be mum. Like, I went to... I don't even want to get into it because it's embarrassing, but I bunked off school and I was walking through Hammersmith Station and Kwame from The Influence had stayed on the train too long. He got off the train to go back over the platform oh, so to get the train back. so he missed stop. Yeah. So this was a real, like... Yeah, it was a moment. Wow. But I only knew who he was because I'd seen his The Influence supporting Michael Jackson at Wembley. So I knew the name when he said who he was, but still I was a little bit like... He's an older man. I mean, I was a young yeah. girl. I was like, what do you want? Well, what's he up so to? So I gave him my friend's number. And then... Um, so did he yeah. just like, did he hear you singing? He heard me singing in a tunnel. I was oh, just wow. like, all I did at that age was, it was annoying. People would talk to me and I'd just be like, <laughs> Oh, there's that girl who just walks around yeah, singing all the time. Yeah, was constant. It was, it was a jar, but that was, I just loved it so much. And then he heard me. And yeah, and then he stopped me and that was, you know, it was the beginning of it. Wow. Yeah. And from there, you, you guys started working together mm-hmm. eventually. And, yeah. And, and, and then Mickey D came down and saw me do a performance at Jazz Cafe and then he signed me on my 17th birthday. Wow. Yeah. Wow, we're, we're gonna we're gonna play some of your own <laughs> stuff. But I wanted to start by playing one of one of those R and B records from Let's an artist who who was running the nineties. Yeah. He, Talk to me yeah. about Bobby Brown and his so influence. So for me, like Bobby Brown was the first like he was like the rebel of of music. The person that had the the character, but also like just he had like the Chris Brown of his time. I remember seeing you know him on mean? top of the pops. Yeah, and I like thinking this guy is this is not inc- like he was the other stuff. His whole mu- his that album to me is just he had the baggy just, trousers. That's the soundtrack swag. To, soundtrack to like my real like youth and understanding that how important music was that was the album I think this is a perfect opportunity I think the yeah. sun hasn't even gone down yet this yeah. is going to sound so good out there Bobby Brown it. and Don't Be Cruel Shola Amra is in the building yeah. how was that listen to that I love it you, I, I listen to that song at least once a week though you know I, I think I should be listening to that a lot more yeah the whole album I remember discovering him on, on like Top of the Pops but it wasn't I think so it was like my prerogative or something yeah. but I, I went back yeah and, like, every little step yeah. as well isn't it? Like, oh. all of them Aroni yeah sick He's he was he man. was sick, yeah. but you know your own career, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. after being on the train when you're supposed to be in school, yeah, being <laughs> you know singing a song, <laughs> Kwame Quay is it Kwame yep. Quayton, isn't yep. it? Yeah, yeah, Kwame Quayton, hearing your voice and mm-hmm. like wow. I need mm-hmm. to spe- I need to get I need to get her in the studio. Yeah, he, I had to have the approval of the rest of the band because it was him and D Influence. So what were they, they like? Were they like? They were, were amazing. They, down? they they nurtured me. I was a kid. I was fifteen. Yeah. So um, Sarah really. Uh, Sarah Ann Webb she was the last person to approve me like I had to go and record and then she listened and said okay cool we'll work with her wow but she was like my and these like guys were, men- these, these guys were a big deal at this time as yeah well, they man. were they were real musicians yeah. they were a band you know yeah. they played music and they made their own music and wrote songs like it was authentic like acid jazz funk I guess so wow. it wasn't pop stuff it was these were musicians the real the real yeah, real so I got and they taught me how to write they showed me this is they write a song and then they'd leave a little section and be like okay now you have to put that bit in oh, they, wow. they so just, you were literally mm, put to the test I was like, mentored, just throwing it yeah, in the deep end my family but it was in a really nice organic way it was yeah. never about money it was just about it was about the love of music yeah. so it was, it was nice amazing yeah. and it wasn't long before you, you started to have no hits of your own I signed my deal and then a year later I was in the top five wow yeah you might quick, need somebody fast, yeah we just, we just flew and just kept flying mm-hmm. like was it like number three or four it, it didn't get it didn't really it was like number four in the charts but it was number one on the airplay charts for like yeah. 20 weeks or I, I remember like, like I, I didn't I didn't know you then but I remember yeah. hearing this song like over and yeah, over and then, and then thinking that you, thinking that um, it was because at that time like everything that was on the radio that sounded as good it as that it old school though was, was American like, though yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I presumed oh this is like everybody, a new everybody thought that for a while, I like, go to different countries, and they'd be like, "Oh, you're from the US?" And I'm like, "No, I'm English." I'm from the ends, bro. But I still sing like that. Like that's how I grew up on that music. Yeah. So I'll, I'll still say "can't" when yeah. I sing instead of "can't." I, I feel like 
it's not the same with singing and rapping at all as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, no. But that's, I mean, some people would get away with it beautifully. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I rate those artists that sing with, and they sound authentically British. It's yeah. just, that's just not how, that's just not the way I learned to sing. And, and you know, I feel like that's a much newer thing. I feel like yeah. nowadays, now that the UK is kind of yeah, we got its own feet. space, people are, are, are really trying to sell their UKness yeah, a yeah. lot more, which, which is, is great. And it's good. Yeah. It's a proud thing. But definitely, we didn't have a space back then. So we had to kind of just. Get in where you fit. Get in where we fit and in, you, exactly. You, you definitely got in as well because yeah, you might need somebody was a hit. You followed that up. You were the one I love. You're the one I love. Another hit. Yeah. The album dropped. That was a hit. Yeah. And then I won the Brit. And then. Two Mobos. Yes. Let's not forget that. Two the Mobos. Yeah, I forgot about the Mobos. Yeah, see? Yeah, the Brit, the Mobos. Where, where's the Brit Award now? It's um, is in, it in my one piece? conservatory. It is. It's in one piece. Yep. Because you know a lot of people, they're like. It is in it one piece, weirdly. All these years later. Amazing. Because yeah. um, I know that like the couple of little Roll Deep awards that we <laughs> <laughs> I think I broke my mobos though. I don't I think they're in a loft somewhere. Oh, wow. But I've got a bag of awards because there was like back then there was awards for everything. Yeah. It was like all these awards. And you were just picking them up, up, like cleaning up. And you were still like so young, was <laughs> I it? I was a kid, I didn't know what the hell was going was it, on. Was it like a bit of a whirlwind for you? Absolutely. Like, this time? All I knew about was what shoes I was wearing. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, and, what where are my shoes? Oh, That's I, all I knew. And I bet the shoes are getting more and more expensive as well <laughs> yeah. from early. <laughs> that was all I knew back then. I didn't know anything but to sing and to buy shoes. You haven't forgotten about the shoes thing now. Yeah, it's not like you've nah, left it in the past. Nah. You might even be Every worse. woman, come on. No, nah, yeah. Every I, woman. Listen, I should, Exactly. I know, you I know. know. <laughs> I know you know. I feel like it's time we should play some of your music as well, though. Go on, then. Need some. They still sound. I thought we was gonna get like right, a little. She died with the ad libs. Baby, <laughs> that's baby. gotta be like top five of your ad libs of all time, surely. No, that's the number one ad lib. It's baby. Oh, sick. Of course it is. Listen, yeah, I done a tune one time, variations of it. and my friend was like, "Oh my god, I'm so proud. You never said baby once." Wow. Like, come on, R and B was baby yeah, and boy. Like, Even now. Uh, yeah, maybe, like, maybe not so much now, but back in the day, like you could literally say "baby" twelve times, but yeah. just sing it a few different ways. It's true, actually. That was the you, whole you, tune. You had literally mastered the art of singing "baby" in one hundred and one different yeah, ways. That's it, man. <laughs> Which was sick. So um, R and B ain't R and B about a baby. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I, I was gonna do some R and B once, but then I realised I couldn't sing at all. Yeah. So I just allowed it. Right, Shola I was in the building. <laughs> in case you're just checking this target in for Mr. Jam tonight, we're coming up to nine o'clock. Just kind of having a quick span back across yeah. this illustrious career. Because we yeah, could, it's a long we time. could. It's twenty years in this September since I released my first album. Wow. Yeah, two decades. Wow. I met someone today who was nineteen. I'm like, I have an album that's older than you. <laughs> by the way, were they all starstruck it's, as well? No, he. We didn't know who the hell I was. He was sick. He's a video director. That's he was the... just like, I was like, I have an album older than you. <laughs> it's actually crazy because. Man. The, 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 the younger end of the audience yeah. they do know who you are it's not like some you... of them do definitely I think they know my music they don't yeah. know me but they yeah. know my music which is that's the most important thing to me I'm yeah. not a celebrity I'm an artist so if they know my music that's fine that's what it's all about exactly and music that you're still making today yes, I am we're going to talk about that in a little while but yes, we're not we done are. we're not done with the history yet no because I feel like it's inspirational because a lot of people they don't know the, the, the roots and the stories and right. how people got here and yeah. people just think oh you just there's a lot and... and it will all be in a book at some point to I be like honest. I like there's, the a sound of that. there's a lot. There's a lot. I'm writing mine at the moment. Yeah, exactly. I was just talking to Morgan on the way here about it, and I was like, you know, telling him the, the stuff I've seen and where I was, and I was like, I was there. You yeah. know, this stuff happened. Yeah. So. And yeah. that was, and what people don't really realize is that that period, especially when you first blew, it was like there was so much money getting pumped into everything, Absolutely. and it was it, it was, was like, incredible. It was very exciting. Like there was a lot going on, and it was it was very glossy. Yeah. R&B and hip hop was just gloss. Yeah, that's what it was. Like Versace shades and furs <laughs> and like, it was just, it was a lot. Bare flossiness, basically. It was just basically. Gloss. So but R&B, I love it. The, the, the I can't R shake it. No, yeah, well, why should you shake it? I can't, you man. Shouldn't. I tried. I'm like, I'm trying to do this whole like, Dirty trainers vibe, but it's just not happening. <laughs> <I'm> just like, <laughs> you know, it's not for everyone. I can't do it. And I feel like there's enough dirty pairs of bands. It. Other you know trainers I mean? are available, no, but there's, babes, there's plenty no. of that about enough as it is. No, I need that fresh. New Shola shit. needs to stay Shola. Yeah, absolutely. With the like the I seven can't. or eight inch heels <laughs> or whatever they are. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, you know, R and B, of course, mm -hmm. your first love. Yeah. Your album came out. It was, mm -hmm. it was predominantly an R and B album. You yeah. were known as an R and B artist. And then the garage thing happened. You took the worst shit out of my mouth. Yeah. UK Garage. And the UK in general started to kind of... That was our thing. It was, yeah, because there was Jungle, which was, was also our thing, but... And you... then the house, and then the garage was born. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, the garage stuff is important because it was the first time I was part of something that was 
uniquely, uniquely British. Yeah. Like my mum was in the drum and bass scene. That's, she used to run Laser Drum and Peckham. Oh, wow, no way. She ran no Unique way. Artists with Caroline. Oh, I wish she I knew you then. looked after all the drum and bass I was DJs, trying to get so. into over at Ian's raves that I was right, too I used young to, for. I used to go Laser Drum when oh, I was like I would have shouted you if I loved that. Exactly. So my mum was already in that out. scene. And, and then the garage thing happened with for me and that was like, it was very much our thing. And yeah. that was the first time I was like, okay, as much as I love R&B and I've come through that way, this I could, there was something that I felt like was ours. Yeah. And that's why when the grime thing happened and Sadie was part of that with Terra and everything, yeah. I felt so strongly towards it because it was like, this is ours. This is this is another movement that's come from yeah. us that's no one else has. Nobody else. No one else can take. Literally. So that's why I felt so connected to that as well. You know, from garage to grime. So yeah, yeah, it's good. It was a nice moment, the garage bit, and I think that. How that's... many? I was about to say, how many times have you, have you, you performed or PA'd? I can't even the count. garage version Babe, of Imagine. I can't even count. It's so funny though. The other day, I met some young girls. They were like twenty year olds, and they're like, "Wait, wait, are you the girl that goes that sings?" Me, 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 me. Are you her? Me, me, me. The intro bit, not even like the, yeah, the, the they even singing the even hook. The, the hook, the me. People know it like literally yeah, from like the I little lo- yeah, murmurs. I love it. It's nice. It's like it's nice to have the both. Do you know yeah. what I mean? The the big pop song and then like the club. And we were talking while that record was playing. Yes, so about much. About some of your... We couldn't even fit the list of them <laughs> during the no. three minutes of 46 that I that know, record was playing. all the collaborations. You, yep. you, you've, you've worked with a lot of people. I have. A lot of UK artists, mostly. Yeah. Like, I love it. I love that people still reach out to me to work. I think that's why I've been able to, like, 20 years later, still have somewhat of a career that means something to me because I've worked with artists that have come after me that have look to me to like bring something to their music and I'm I'm so grateful for that. Yeah you like you you super grateful. You've done some like bangers over the year as well That's like with, nice. with, I like that. With, with some of these artists. Yeah, uh, could you could bunch. you give like a I wouldn't So wanna... there's a one I've done for you guys for Aim High. Yeah you, you, we we had a we had, we had a we had a good few studio had, sessions yeah, didn't we? Yeah we did. So we had trouble with me, J2K Wiley, Devlin and then I've got I've got stuff with Ghetto I've worked with Wiley, obviously. Todd Local, Todd still working La, with. Um, oh my God, there's so many. Da Vinci, Terra Danger, DWE. Oh, I can't even think. The list is so long. How I'm does it like usually work? Is it like a phone, just a phone will ring you up and like, show, I need you, I need, I need you or something? No, usually someone will hit me up and say like this song and then they'll send me the track. Like I'll never do it unless it feels right. Yeah. Like I'm not doing it for the sake of it. It has to feel like something I want to be a part of. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't make music for sales or for celebrity. I make music because I love music. Yeah. So, has there yeah. ever been any awkward kind of? I'm not really on that one. And loads, man. Got taken Always. the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, some people are like, okay, I get it, and then some people are yeah. like, oh, but, but you just have to like be very well, well versed in being like, um. I have so many things coming out at the moment. I just can't possibly do that again now because I have too many collabs coming out right now. Sorry, maybe in the future. No. Uh, we, yeah, we've got but, a couple of your um, of, of collabs that we're, we're going to yeah. get into. Talk yes. about your relationship with Giggs because I know you guys are, yeah, are real close friends bro. as well. Man. I love him to pieces, man. Like he Giggs from when I first worked with him. Basically, my son was a Giggs fan from four years old. So my son wow. was like spitting Giggs bars when I was like what <laughs> like four yeah. and I'm like what so when I went I worked with him I brought my son and yeah. he just completely froze he's like four years old like this in the studio wow. watching like gig was, was like a god to him wow. to this day he still plays the same album over and over he's like 14 now wow and he's just always been obsessed with gigs. So when gigs reached out to me to work and the, the whole process was so magical, like from start to finish, he did his bit, I did my bit, he did his bit. It just worked. And every every time we've worked together, it's been the same kind of environment. But he's just he's just so real and so honest and like genuine. He's always been like that with me. Yeah, he, straightforward. He, he, I, feel, I don't feel like there's anybody who like can say him, anything else. Like you with get. him, like from day dot, he would, he would always say, people don't want me to do this with you and people say this about you, but I don't care because this is how I feel. Yeah. So, and in the industry, that's rare to have people just be completely direct. Like everyone's kind of like, oh, hey, babe. And oh, lots of beating around the bush. Well, oh yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You know? And then you get people that are just like, nah, this is this is the real, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. And so yeah, we've we built up like a like a his family, do you know what I mean? Yeah, and we've got a good solid working relationship and we make good music together, so Perfect time to play this. Boom production. Boom production. Boom production. Boom production. Yeah. <laughs> that still sounds as big as it did when I first heard it, to yeah. be fair. To be totally honest with you. Gigs of Charlotte Amar. Cut above the rest if you're just checking in. 
We're kind of having like a mini in depth yeah, with Shola. Off, off, Is, yeah, off, oh, yeah, off yeah, mic. Yeah, off well. mic we have, <laughs> <laughs> off mic, obviously, we have conversations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, we just like slating our pal Danny for the whole of that track. <laughs> so if you're out there, bro. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> we was getting onto you a little bit. Yeah. But um, the collaborations, yeah. like, like we said, the list is extensive. And, yeah. and like, I'm, I don't remember hearing one where I've thought, I'm not just saying this as well, because I'd be honest. I like, know. I don't remember hearing one where I'd be like, oh, I don't know about Charlotte I, on I that do. one. I do, I do. Oh, But okay. that's me, because I'm like in. that. Which I'll one? Pick, Which no, one? I'm not going there right now. <laughs> but I feel like that I have, a majority of the collaborations I've done, I'm, I'm fairly proud of. Even yeah. at the time, I was like, it's not my best vocal performance or not my best work. But I look back and I'm like, I said, that was something. It meant something at that point in time. So yeah. I'm kind of happy with the majority of them. And with gigs as well. The, like, yeah. the, Obviously, you guys have maintained your relationship. You're great yeah, friends. Man, but you, you also put gigs onto... A put rapper Drake who, onto gigs. yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that because a, a lot of people just think that. But I've been uh, friends with Drake for a long time, for yeah. like ten years now. He's before he was like Drake. Yeah, because I remember um, in his early, on him. his early yeah, tracks, he he's like me before Show I knew him. Arm. Yeah, because Terra, Terra Danger said to me, "Do you know how this is rapper? He's shouting you," and I didn't know who he was. So, um, and then we had a mutual friend in America that connected us. So we started speaking this like ten years ago. But um, the last couple of times he came over, he was sort of like obviously cottoning on to what was going on here. He's yeah. from Toronto, so yeah. it's, they're, they're like, more connected to the UK People don't really realise like, how yeah, they're way more connected Toronto to the UK. is like London. Exactly. It's so, so like, because, it's because, mad how close Because it is. the West Indian, the, the com- West Indian community is, they, they're there by choice, you know. It's yeah. like we, the same way we all come here. Yeah. St. Lucia's, Dominicans, Jamaica's, like we came here by choice. It's yeah. a similar vibe. So... Yeah, we anyway, we became friends and he was picking up on our scene for a minute, for a long time. Obviously, he shouted me and Craig, he was into the garage yeah. movement. Um, but when he was picking up on the MCs, I was like, look, you know, you need to know about gigs. So I had to give him a little brief. I played him 21 seconds. I played wow. him, I gave him the little history. Yeah, yeah, look, little this run is up. what you like. Just <laughs> if you're going to come here, know the, you know, yeah. know the whole the history of it so so it's basically yeah, love, your love fault you love talking the hardest it's huh? all your fault that like Drake I think he would have found him sh- anyway no, but, uh, not but... just gigs but like Drake nah. is such a huge UK nah, Drake fan Drake just knows music he yeah. just knows good music and he's he's very good at you know like picking up pieces of other people and putting yeah. them together and making his own He's like, do you get what I'm saying? Which is he's what brilliant great doing. artists are exactly. good at doing. He can take excerpts from here, there and everywhere and just make it something brilliant, which is which is an art in itself. So, yeah, he's just him. He's good. He's good at doing that. But, you know, he, him and gigs are like, they're like family now. Yeah. So, but I'm, I, that makes me happy. I'm not saying like I'm the reason behind it, but I had to show him we gigs. So I'm like, if you're going to come here. The intro was quite important though, to be fair. Yeah, like, you know, you can't come to the UK and rate every MC and not, pay attention to gigs because he's like he's the our first greasy yeah, like proper is, like come on the guy he's bust the whole exactly, door for exactly. lots so, of what's going yeah, on right so now so let's have it right big salute to gigs but um, like we said the, the, the list of, of collabs goes on we could we could play collabs that you did to the end of the show I should probably do a little <laughs> a, a featuring album like a little collabs just put all my collabs on one thing just, yeah. <laughs> just like get that out of there. you know what I'm saying yeah. um, but Cassie's Dead who, who's an artist yes. who's very he, he he's not unique. sort of like, yeah very yeah. unique mm-hmm. you know people it's very mysterious there's yeah. like a whole vibe about him you don't it's get to incredible. see his face you don't get to see him very often it's just the music it's about the yeah. music it's yeah. not about a personality it's not about a judgement which is refreshing as well he's just putting out art and he's making art and that's his passion and that's his goal and that's what people get and that's what people love tell us about when you and Cass linked up for, for the so remix so Toddler made that happen so I did weirdly me and Toddler went to the studio to write a new song and he played me the this key the keys that Chili had laid down and I was like I'd just done Danger the original and I just started singing that for some reason so i done that and then he was like I'm in the studio with Cass is Dead and I was like get him on the track and then it happened it just happened he came down to the studio and it was that was it it just worked oh there you go <laughs> anyone would think I had that lined up he did <laughs> Charlotte Aaron Cass job. is dead target on job got to be on job these days ain't ya Shola Amma, Cass is dead. That's the Tolity. remix of Danger. Tolity remix. on the remix. JK original, Danger. Got very different from JK. the original as well. The original yeah, was a like UK garage kind very, of two-step vibes. Yes, very two-step, very... Whereas that is a lot more chilled. <laughs> which we also like. <laughs> which we love. Right, so like, 
we we've kind of we we've kind of flown through. Yeah, we had the to history. Make it quick. Bradley we, will give you one of the in-depth stuff, really, for real, for real. No, but we we're gonna we're gonna wait for your book, aren't we? Exactly. Exactly. We're this gonna... is the precursor <laughs> to the book. <laughs> exactly. But we're not letting you go just yet. You're nah. not done yet. Because in 2017, you know, all these years later, the, the, the UK is at such a place yeah, it's that none of us would have expected. I kind of knew though. In like, there was a point that I knew that this was going somewhere. It's like when Sadie started working with Terra and there was Kano and D-Double and All Nasty and you lot and the whole, that and there was, I, I, seeing that happen from my perspective, I knew like I kind of had the foresight that it was going somewhere. Yeah, Because it that, was like, you guys were so, you just were just- it, Let me it turn the music just, down for this bit. Yeah, Go on, you, you yeah, guys you were, like the bit about you guys. No, I'm joking, <laughs> I'm joking. But you know I'm, what I mean? It was like, you guys were just, there was nothing. It was like a, there was a new there energy. There was no, there was nothing industry about you. You were just authentically like everything you put out and did was it was just you. It was your movement. It was your area. It was the whole thing from yeah. Dizzy, all of it. It was mad, yeah. Yeah, and Crazy so witnessing time. that and seeing that coming from where I came from, which was completely like it was quite corporate yeah. the world I entered into. Yeah, you know, seeing what you guys were doing, I was like, this. And I remember Tara saying like, "Why do you want to work with me?" And I'm like, "Because you are." London, you're the my version of Timberland. Yeah, we got like, Tara. Me and Tara went yeah, college together like, as well. Like I'm like you don't realize how important you are. Like and we, me and Tara have made beautiful music together the same way me and Da Vinci have yeah. as well. Um, but I always, I always kind of knew that that was on the cards. But um, it's beautiful to see that that's happened even and then some. Yeah. But I felt that when I could see it back then, I was like, yeah, this is this is different this is news it's, it's, it's ours we've got it like we finally 100%. got it I, like i remember 100%. the times when it was like us always was looking down exactly. upon us exactly it was like no love whatsoever you had to go there and work with them yeah. to be accepted by your own people to a certain like, extent for me that's how it was yeah i had to work with american producers american writers american just to get in the door just to be for my people to go oh you're something yeah. you know and then for me like looking and seeing seeing happen here and happen like no like there was nothing about it that was glossy or shiny or it was just it is what it is it's, yeah. you've got Jammer Lord and the Mics you've got the whole it was just the it was rawest, raw. yeah. purest yeah. and that was you know you have to you know you have to appreciate and respect and honour that yeah and most definitely nice and with that mm-hmm. with this whole mad UK movement there's like yeah. a whole bunch there's of artists so many. who you feeling out of the, the, the new wave Um, there's a bunch there's a bag of people I like I think I'm kind of like I've turned myself into like the auntie of, <laughs> of the industry. I'm like, there's so many young ones that I just rate so highly, like a whole bunch of them. But um, yeah, I, I don't even want to start naming people because yeah. it's like I leave people out. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to name. But like, I think everything that's happening now is amazing. Yeah, and not even just in music. I'm talking behind the scenes as well. I'm talking about the people that are like coming the in. Business running, is better. Yeah, business, it's like on all the levels. The presenters, the whole like, there's this different it's a different energy and it's really nice to see it is real nice and yep. you're you're by no means like taking a back seat either you're still like no, at man, it I'm as there. ever we've been we've been hammering this latest <laughs> record as well like rinsing it oh which one the footsie one. Oh, with the Deneo. yeah yes. T- tell us about this link up i'm so happy me and Deneo got a song together Deneo as well he's having a Listen, way of a time i've always always loved and rated Deneo so highly he's very very gifted yeah. and we worked together a couple of times we wrote some songs together and i've always wanted to get this a track of him but it was never the right moment and yeah. then this came along and it just happened that me and him ended up on the same song um, yeah, and it was, it's nice, it's good. How, it how, how did it come about? Well, I think someone, a few people had been on the track, you know, a few people got passed through Trying a couple of people. Trying out a couple of top liners and that. Yeah, and, and the, you know, it's, it's a great song. Yeah. You know, I can't take credit for writing it, but I think because of its sound, like lending to the past of the whole garage yeah. thing, it fits well with me and Danae because we both, that's our roots yeah. are in that area. So, and we're still, doing stuff now but we're, that's where we're from so I think it just fit it just ends up with the perfect fit so it's nice we're going to play that in just a moment anything else you got you want to get off your chest while you're here 
Uh, what should we be looking out for? What's next after that as well? Oh, oh so my solo stuff is coming. I was uh, listen. I was waiting for you to yeah. say that because I've, I've so heard. I wanted you, to I heard play some stuff in the pipeline. To, yeah. So wait I've a minute. Got... <laughs> you mean you? You mean you wanted to play something, but you decided you weren't gonna? Do you know why? Because it's a pre-master. I'm a bit it's offended. Not the actual master of the track, so I can't play on radio the song that's not I'm offended. The finished version yet, because that's just like. Do you know how many unfinished versions I've played <laughs> in my career, Shola Amma? Yeah, without asking permission. No, with the full <laughs> permission. Why no. he sends me records like? So, but it's gonna come, I swear I'll give you the exclusive I will but basically the next song is gonna be it's my my new stuff but it's with Champion so oh, Champion sick. DJ has produced we've got like a we've got a track together that is like my heart and soul it's like oh, the, see, now I'm getting my all, favourite now stuff I'm that be, I've like, made in I'm my gonna whole 20 year career I'm gonna be on to you for this, this record is, no, now but it's the truth that my favourite music wow. I've made in 20 years is me and Champion end up doing this song and we're doing a whole bunch of other stuff together wow. So that's coming. It's that's a big Rock statement. You. It's the truth. It's one hundred percent the truth. Sick. And yeah, it's called Rock Me. Rock. I said Rock You. It's called Rock Me. <laughs> Rock with me. But um, yeah. So that's coming. I'm gonna do a video for that, and then I've got the other like the rest of my solo stuff coming. So and then the book as well. Wow. So, so read like, all about it. Listen, this like we're, we're gonna be having this conversation in twenty more years <laughs> on the full like Let's the forty so. year. I hope I'm still alive. I'll probably, I probably I doubt I'll see you on the radio as well in twenty years. They'll be they would they would they would kick me out long before <laughs> that. <laughs> Next number radio. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Right. Radio 4 <laughs> with Shoulder Rama and Target. And pension and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've got to end on this the one that we're currently rinsing mm-hmm. on one extra before we do that let's make some noise in the building for tonight's special guest Shola Amar. <laughs>